Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe and at whichever time you are listening to this series of lectures in India or abroad. Uh, as you know my name, good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India and uh, the course which uh, the lectures which I am delivering is uh, titled Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management under the SWAM lecture series. So, uh, today we will uh, do the 10th lecture, the main idea which we are discussing in the ninth one was basically we had planned after considering the other uh, methodologies how to draw the efficient frontier. We had discussed in some brief details about single index model and uh, we did uh, plan to cover the multi index model and the diversifiable risk, non diversifiable risk. But uh, as the intensity of the discussion went on, uh, we have to cover these uh, brief and broad topics in depth obviously, I will discuss uh, in this 10th lecture. The lecture title as you know is portfolio theory and it continues um, in this vast domain which we are discussing. The bullet points obviously, the first uh, the bullet points, three bullet points which I am basically bringing from the ninth one which we have to cover is basically non diversifiable or market or systemic risk, I will come to that. That means, the risk which cannot be diversified, so there would be a reason for that why we are using this term. The other risk would be which you can diversify on the non systematic risk, we will discuss very briefly I did mention in the ninth lecture about BSE and NSE, the Bombay Stock Exchange, New York, um, the National Stock Exchange and obviously, I will just mention other stock exchange throughout the world which uh, do uh, trading. I will only concentrate on the the scripts which are the, the stocks, I would not go into the derivatives and all these things or commodities. And we will also consider and uh, considering the, we are we, we do cover at a quick pace, but considering there are different ideas to be covered, different concept to be discussed, how the calculations are done theoretically. So, if the flow goes more into depth. So, maybe we will try to cover multi index model, if not we will basically take it forward to the 11th one. So, this is the only um, excuse um, I, I would basically uh, ask from all of my listeners. So, if you remember uh, the single index model was considered based on the fact that co movements of the stock price is basically pegged on to the market index, because the reason mean that if we have one central index or central variable based on, on which all the market uh, the all the indices uh, prices, indices in the sense that I am considering the scripts or a small combination of scripts which may form a portfolio. So, if their prices can be pegged onto the market um, index, then it becomes very easy for us to understand and also have uh, overall view that how the overall portfolio which may be formulated by a decision maker, its risk can be found out as well as the returns. So, based on that we had the formula, I will use uh, the color here uh, darkish red. So, we had that R i bar and again I may be repeating many things time and again. So, please bear with me. 
this bar is basically the average value it can be either capital R or small r depending on what type of returns you want to consider you have alpha i plus beta i into r m bar r m bar is the market risk and if it is capital r it will be capital r on both the sides of the equation or else small r now when we consider the weights it's w i and for this equation we will basically have i is equal to 1 to capital n or small n as the case may be depending on how the nomenclature is then we see that i can find out R p bar which is basically the portfolio overall return that was basically found out giving alpha p plus beta p into R m bar. So, these were basically considered the weighted um, alpha values weights being w 1 to w n and beta was also being the weighted beta for the portfolio. <coughs> Similarly, I could find out sigma square p also. Now, that is sigma square p is basically the risk of the portfolio considering I am aware of the risk of each and every individual stock or script. Now, if you remember when I was considering the last lecture the ninth one sigma square i it came out that the risk was dependent on two important factors was was i won't write the formula because we have been discussing it many times as required we will expand it it was basically dependent on sigma square m which is the market risk and also you had the sigma square epsilon which was the white noise the risk corresponding to the white noise and i did mention that white noise has technically would have a standard normal distribution with 0 mean and 1 as the variance, but here we are considering sigma square uh, and we did uh, draw theoretically how would the, the fluctuation of the errors would look like. Now, when I bring this sigma square b p the, the risk for the portfolio and this formula I have already expanded. So, without going um, wasting much time let me consider this. So, here there technically would be two paths one is coming from the market. So, in order to differentiate that let me use the color. So, coming from the market which I am marking as blue. So, these are the risk y 2 why there are two terms because you pay attention the first term which I am marking as 1 here in blue is basically w i square. So, technically if I concentrate on the variance covariance matrix is basically the principal diagonal even though variance covariance matrix is not the apt word I should use for the uh, matrix. So, the one would basically correspond to the values along the principal diagonals that is why you see w 1 square into beta 1 square into sigma square m. And if I concentrate on the second term which I mark as 2 is basically the of the diagonal element that is why you have w i w j beta i beta j sigma square m. And if I consider the other component the risk for the portfolio which is coming from the white noise let me use the green color here I put a tick mark here. So, that is basically summation of w i square into sigma square epsilon suffix i. Now, if I consider both term 1 and term 2 marked in blue, then it becomes that I have the corresponding risk which is coming from the market and other risk which is basically coming from the white noise or the error is this one. So, now we will concentrate that there is a market risk and there is a risk coming from the white noise and we will basically try to understand that what do they actually mean. 
and if I consider, so you are thinking that it is sigma square epsilon i that means I add up all the white noises uh, variances multiply them with the squared out the corresponding weights for each and every script and add it up. So, this is what it is given here the one marked in, in green circle. And the other part is if you concentrate beta p is in itself the weighted values of, of the beta i is for each and every stock. So, weights multiplied by beta i we have summed it up based on that uh, and obviously, this, the corresponding square term is there. Now, from the equation which we just saw the variance of the portfolio. So, it is basically the variance of the portfolio. So, if I have a uh, uh, 3 stocks, so I will basically find out the corresponding um, risk from the white noise, risk from the market multiplied by corresponding quantities w i s and, and all these things. And then I will try to basically differentiate this 2 risk. So, this is basically the variance let me mark with the with the, the highlighter it will be easier. So, this is the variance of the portfolio formed. So, now we can have some feel that what actually diversification means and how it really uh, gives a very very nice way of handling that actually if when we diversify how the risk in the long run can be distributed or reduced. Now, assume for the time being for the time being that there are n number of stocks capital n small n whatever it is if it is context specific I will specify it is either capital n or small n, but if I just mention n consider it is only relevant as as follows as given in the slide. So, if I, um, I do not mention capital n or small n please uh, bear with me because in the flow of the discussion I may miss it. So, there are n number of stocks. So, when I put it back into the formula. So, see here now the risk has been broken down to two part. So, the red one which I mark here is basically coming from the market and the blue one which I mark here is basically coming from the, uh, the risk of the white noise. Now, I have plugged in in place of w i um, the, the weights are not considered. So, in place of w i the n is there. Now, notice a very interesting thing as n increases you will see these two terms which are marked in red and blue will have different characteristics not the values of and in n, n what how they tend to be. So, this is what is the main concept which we are discussing as of now. Now, for the risk which is as given here in the last slide which is sigma square consists of two parts risk from the portfolio and risk from the white noise. We have the first term which is known as the non diversifiable or market risk. And the second term is known as the diversifiable or non market or non systematic risk. The first one is the systematic risk that is risk coming from the system and why so. Now, why so before um, I should go back to the last slide. So, why so? Because if you see that the risk corresponding to the white noise if it is basically uh, weights are given and, and we are considering the weights as such that I am investing equal proportions in each stock which can be considered um, hypothetically it may it, it is true practically can also be made, but it will give us a good idea that the part corresponding to this which uh, I would now highlight this one this part as n increases this can Ten to zero. So that's why you are considering is a diversifiable risk, not coming from the system, which can be made zero. And corresponding to the other part, obviously the term would be there because that's why we cannot di di diversify and it's coming from the system by itself. Now. 
now i am just uh, changing the direction a little bit bit because these will be relevant later on so if you remember we have been talking about return in for the stocks and i am always been utilizing the capital r and but i did mention time and again as relevant that we can uh, utilize small r also so if i consider capital r as small r which may be known to all of you so technically if i am considering small r and i have investment made as of today given by i suffix not so the not value is basically the time frame and i get my investment late one day later one one time period later it is given as i1 so small r would be i1 minus i not by i not and capital r would be i1 by i not these were the considering but now if we consider the returns of the uh, the stocks and we have the stock prices given so in place of i not and i1 basically i would have selling price or the closing price or the selling on a buying price closing price of the purchase stock at the end of the day so if i see this formula so whatever i i, I would be discussing of the stock returns basically they also have the basic concept given as for capital r and small r so if i consider the small r values for the stocks which i now highlight with green color so assuming they are log normal distributed which is true cap small r would be ln of sp2 divided by sp1 sp2 as i was mentioning is the closing price of the stock at day 2 which technically is i1 and sp1 is basically the closing price of the stock at day 1 which is technically i0 in place of r obviously as mentioned we can use small r and do all the calculations what we have done till now so rather than taking r we can capital r we can take small r but remember the formula would be corresponding to the fact which i am just hashing in order to make it clear that we can use small r for our calculations on all consideration what we have done we can redo this whole set considering small r now we are talking about the bsc and the nsc just a brief note in india we have the bombay stock exchange and the national stock exchange the most well known being the bsc 30 index there are different indices also this is the bsc 30 which is basically a basket or a conglomeration or a portfolio of 30 stocks and the nifty is basically given by the conglomeration of 50 stocks which i mark highlight in blue and the and the links for bsc india and nsc india are given people can go there and have a look and to just have an understanding and obviously if you are interested to know something about the bsc and the nsc at least initially you can definitely go into wikipedia and have a uh, look at the write up and that will give you some idea the bsc 30 has 30 companies obviously there are many companies but it is chosen 31 depending on the demand and supply so if you read the news like financial express economic times uh, if you see the read the economist or keep a tab of different uh, financial channels uh, many a times you will hear that the bsc 30 com com companies constituent whole things are being changed some stocks are coming some are going out depending on the demand and supply how the market is doing similarly for nsc 50 so as of july 2020 the following companies are there so they are from different sectors so there are 30 stocks i'll just read read them aloud so all information about this companies can be obtained from their corresponding websites as well as uh, from bsc so you have asian paints you have bajaj auto bajaj financial services hcl technologies hdfc bank 
आई सी आई सी आई इन्फोसिस कोटक महिंद्रा बैंक महिंद्रा महिंद्रा नेस्ले ओ एन जी सी रिलायंस सन फार्मा टाटा स्टील टाइटन एक्सिस बैंक बजाज बजाज दैट वॉज बजाज फिनेंशियल सर्विस दिस बजाज फिनेंस भारती दिस एच डी एफ सी नॉट एच डी एफ सी बैंक एच यू एल इंदस इन बैंक आई टी सी एल एन टी मारुति सुजुकी और एम एस आई एल मारुति सुजुकी इंडिया लिमिटेड एन टी पी सी पावर ग्रिड एस बी आई टी सी एस टाटा कंसल्टिंग सर्विस आई टी सर्विस एंड कंसल्टिंग फॉर आटा सर्विस एंड आल्ट्राटेक सो इफ यू सी द कॉन्ग्रोमेशन इज कंसिस्ट ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर इंडस्ट्रियल सेक्टर ऑटो सेक्टर एंड सो एन एंड सपोर्ट आई टी सेक्टर्स ऑल्सो बिकॉज इफ यू सी हियर टी सी एस इज देयर इन्फोसिस इज देयर एंड ऑल दिस थिंग्स एंड बिग ऑटो कंपनीज लाइक यू हैव Mahindra Mahindra and other companies are also there Maruti Suzuki consumers being Hindustan Unilever and there are other companies in the petroleum sector you have ONGC all these things are going now let us so this uh, slide may be a little bit smaller in in font size but i'll just i won't read all of them but i'll just give a um, idea so in, as an this standard reports nifty as on 28th august 2020 considered out of 50 scripts starting from reliance to infosys tcs is there kotak mahindra itc lnt bajaj finance asian paints sbi mahindra mahindra dr reddy's hdfc life insurance britannia industries in consumer ntpc wipro which is in it Bajaj Financial Services in the finance sector, Hero Motor Corp in the in the sector of industry, Indus In Bank in the financial one, Aishan Motors is there, Coal India, UPL, Hindalco, IOC in the oil sector, Tata Motors, Bharati Infrastructure Limited, HDFC Bank Limited, HDFC Limited, ICICI. So HDFC Bank and and ICICI Bank are in the financial one. एच यू एल भारती एक्सेल एयरटेल एक्सिस बैंक मारुति एच सी एल नेस्ले सो मेनी ऑफ द नेम्स आर कॉमन लाइक नेम्स बींग कॉमन बींस एस बी आई एम एन एन महेंद्र महेंद्र इन्फोसिस मारुति नेस्ले सो लेट मी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग इट नेस्ले साम फार्मास्यूटिकल्स अल्ट्राटेक पावर ग्रिड टाइटन कंपनी टेक महेंद्र इन द आई टी सेक्टर बजाज ऑटो सिप्ला BPCL again petroleum one, Sri Cement, ONGC. ONGC was already there in in, in BSC. You have Tata Steel, Grassim Industries, Adani Ports, GSD, and Z Entertainment Enterprise. So you can just for information, you can note down or do some studies because these are easily available in in NSC BSC site. You can get the information in Yahoo Finance, in Google Finance. in general you can just note down the end of the day price of the scripts and draw it uh, with respect to time or you can draw it with uh, nsc price of previous day being drawn on the x axis and today being drawn on the y axis so is basically one day difference and you just try to plot the scatter plot for each of the scripts you can draw the graphs of the script price i am not talking about the returns i am talking only on the price you can draw the graphs of the scripts for each script draw the volatility so volatility can be found out that considering that uh, the the scripts are drawn you can find out how they look like scattered and so on and so forth so total volumes can you also be found out volumes would be uh, total values volumes would be number of shares and values would be the number of shares multiplied by that corresponding price which is there so just for information i have noted down i am taken from nsc india uh, the historical index data i am only taken nsc i am not concentrating on any of the particular scripts you can do that in the last slide i did discuss you can do that but i am not considering that you have from 1st november this is a snapshot from uh, i can take it from 1st to 30th uh, of november what i am considering the paucity of space 
I have taken first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth obviously being uh, the holiday. You have 7th, 8th, 9th of November and what do I have? I basically have the opening of the uh, script price, what is the high throughout the day, what is the low throughout the day and what is the close. So, when I was talking about SP2 and SP1, stock price 2 for today and stock price 1 for one day before, I was basically concentrating on the closing price because closing price basically has all the information subsumed under it for all the information which has uh, taken place during the trading of that particular strip throughout the day. We have total shares traded throughout the day. So, say for example, for 1st November 2016, the value is given as 17006895 and the corresponding value on to the right is basically the total turnover in crores. Now, one important thing even though it is not very important as of now, but just for information. Technically, if everything is constant, that means today's uh, at the evening the the stock price closes and there is no other trading throughout the world. So, no information uh, is perfect. So, there is no demand and supply gap. So, technically the closing price of today, which I am now marking in green should basically be the actually should be the opening price of the next day. Even though that is not there as marked here in this red line this red line which I am using. So, it means there is some information taking place between the closing of, of one day and the opening of the next day such that it will have an effect such that the prices will either increase or decrease, but technically it should be the case theoretically, practically it is not true. So, these values which I have taken, so you may be thinking from where these values like 8626, so I should not use the red color because there is red combination is there, I will use the green one. So, 8626, H514 and all these values are there. If I go back, these are the values. 8626, I have not considered the decimal, you can, but I have not considered here. 8514 and so on and so forth, which is basically given in the fifth column. These values are transferred in the next slide. So, the dates are given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 6 not being there as I mentioned being a holiday, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th is also there, 10th was not there in the last slide, but I just included here. And I consider the formula of ln sp2 by sp1 where it is done now sp1 and sp2 are denoted by p suffix t minus 1 and pt, p is basically the price and the suffix gives the day. So, if I use those values, so it is ln considering the formula for the small r, this rate is basically the small r formula now, which I have already mentioned. So, there should not be any confusion now. Based on that, I find out the returns and the returns if you see, they can be negative positive. That is why in order to different, differentiate that, the negative ones are marked as in, in red color positive are marked in blue color. Now, why this negative positive is very very simple like if I have invested 100 rupees and if the return is more than 100 obviously, the return uh, if the prices sorry prices are more than 100. So, obviously, there is a positive return if the prices are less than 100 there is a negative return based on that which I do. So, whenever we try to find out again just for information if we plot the distribution of all the returns both negative and positive combined which is small r, you will basically get the distribution of the returns. I am not talking about the losses or the gain distribution. If I consider the losses the red one, if I plot them I will have the loss distribution, if I plot the blue one I will basically have the, the profit distribution and you can do many work related to that also. So, now consider that considering BSC what is it NSC and uh, how the returns are used 
and about the closing price volumes and uh, total value. So, I consider a theoretical example here. So, I have in the first column month, it can be month, day, week, second, whatever it is, they are given the serial number 1 to 12 and you may be thinking, which I think I should just clear, you may be thinking if the, uh, the prices of that fifth and sixth were not there, it is a holiday, how do we consider? So, technically, if you want to um, uh, be quite in detail in your calculation, you can consider uh, them as using the iterative, iterative, iterative methods or simple concepts, you can basically plug in some values taking the price of Friday and the price of Monday and plug in. There are methods for that or else if it is not required depending on uh, number of days you are trading. Technically, out of the 365, they would be about 240, 250 number of days of trading. So, if you, are, if you want to consider those 240, then you need not be bothered about the Saturday, Sunday and the national and the public holidays. But if you do want to, you can use simple iterative methods, plug in those values and do the calculations accordingly. Coming back to this example, you have the price, uh, the price is given uh, for prices means in the sense these are the returns, that is why they are a negative values and I have removed the, the percentage of the decimal. So, for A, it starts from 12.05 and goes to minus 0 0.694. Similarly, for B, the values start from 25.20 to 1.32. For C, it basically are, uh, starts from 31.67, goes to 7.94. And the corresponding S&P values of the return and uh, um, uh, for the for S&P, for the corresponding days are given from 12.28 to minus 1.15. Now, it is given that given these find out the mean return and the variance of each stock and obviously, each stock when I am doing I can find out for the S and P also returns and the variance. Okay, let me I think I have uh, may not have done it in detail, but let me explain it here. So, if I want to find out the mean return for A, so considering there are 12 days, so if I consider A is equal to 1, 2, 3, which is A, B, C, T is equal to, T means the time frame for how many days, this is 1 till 12. So, if I want to find out the returns for A, put, let me put it, this is R consider, if it is capital R, I will just replace small r by capital R, if it is R A sub and bar, bar meaning the averages, it will be 1 by 12 summation of i t is equal to 1 to 12 R i, so it is A already, so I need not be bothered, A t, so A, what is A t? T values, so T changes, so T is equal to 1, R A 1, I will just mark down few 1, few 1 will be 12.05, which is this one. Similarly, if I have R A 12, it will be minus 0 0.94. So, add up these values and, and, and find out the average. Similarly, when I replace a with B, I can have R B 1 as 25.20. Similarly, I can have R B 12 is equal to 1.32. So, 12.2520 is this, 1.32 is this. And if I need to do that, so based on these calc, I can find out the average which was talking about it will be r bar b. Similarly, I can find out r bar c 
which will be I am again writing only the formula it will be 1 by 12 summation t is equal to 1 to 12 r a c sorry c t. So, when t is 1 the value is 31.67 when t is 12 it is 7.94 so I can find out the averages. Now, comes the question that how do I find out the variance. Now, if you remember the, the concept uh, in simple statistics which was already which you may have done and if it is not done, but it is a very simple concept. So, basically I have to take a sample estimate for the variance the standard error square the standard error word being used for the sample. So, if I have if I use that formula hat hat means basically okay, I, I should change the color. So, it will make us feel comfortable in trying to discuss. So, this is square hat being the estimated value. So, I will they can be two formulas. So, so I will use the first formula here is 1 by n summation x i x basically is the random variable x i minus mu whole square and another would be the case 1 by n minus 1 summation x i minus x bar n whole square. So, this n and n minus 1 in the denominator basically denote one loss of degrees of freedom for the case when the population mean value mu is not known and is replaced by the sample mean. So, technically also here we should use 1 by n minus 1 and n minus 1 n is basically now number of reading. So, do not confuse this n with the number of stocks. So, this n is technically t. So, it will be 1 by t minus 1 and I want to find out say for example, the variance of a. So, consider I have used uh, the let me use the uh, little bit reddish black, uh, this blackish red. So, this value r bar a has been found out adding up divided being by 12. So, actually in that case sigma square hat for a would be 1 minus t minus 1 summation. So, this summation values from which to which I should have given it technically would be from i is equal to 1 to n here i is equal to 1 to n here that would be considered. So, here also it will be t is equal to 1 to capital T you would basically have r a t minus r bar a whole square. Let me check whether I have written it right. Yes and 1 minus t. So, based on that you will find out the variance of script a. Similarly, this can be found out by utilizing the same formula, but in place of r bar a it is now r bar b. And similarly, I can find out sigma square hat for c utilizing r bar c. So, r bar c are basically r bar a, r bar b, r bar c are the corresponding sample estimate of the population mean which is technically here in this formula given as x bar n and similarly you can find out for S and P also. This is very simple calculation you can utilize the excel sheet or use a simple uh, sheet of paper, pencil or a calculator and do all the calculations. Okay. So, let us move to the very simple concept consider you have 5 individual scripts Ashia Bond Brewery, ABB, Bharat Electronics Limited, Bell, Bell 
GSW Steel, LIC Housing, Steel Authority of India sale, say for example, from NSE for the respective time frame from 1st January 2020 to 30th of June 36, 2020. And based on that, you can find out the return given the closing prices and you can also find out the corresponding nifty returns. Now, it is given very interestingly, I will highlight it that find the values of betas for the 5 companies. So, whatever you have been excuse me discussing about single latest amount model is in the basically the application. So, for the last 10 minutes, we have been doing that calculation to finding out sigma and all this value. So, I did not mention it, but now it should be clear that that was a simple method based on which you can utilize the data set to find out the returns and risk for each and every corresponding script and which was A, B, C and you can also find out the returns and the variance of the market which is S and P. So, technically when I find it for S and P, it is no more sigma square suffix that script number it will be sigma square obviously hat uh, I should mention that sigma square hat um, hat and suffix m is the market one similarly you will have r bar m return for the market. Now what we actually need if you remember when we were considering the single index model in the in the last class it was mentioned that co movements of all the script price with respect to the market is a very nice way of trying to basically subsume or reduce your level of calculation to the maximum possible extent and yet build up a very good model the single index models or later on we will see the multi index model. And based on that we found out that beta was basically the slope, we will see later uh, let me mention it here beta would basically be a type of risk. So, rather than sigma, we are now trying to utilize beta as a type of, of risk, which is the risk or the level of dependence which the market has or effect the market has on the particular stock. So, beta is very high or very low, the corresponding movement of uh, the value of script when the market moves up or down would be correspondingly giving us the information that how closely it is related to the market, whether it is very risky, less risky and so on and so forth. And obviously, if you remember when we had discussed the diversification, so that was that idea that how you can diversify the systematic and the diversity and non diversify the risks concepts of uh, corresponding to the market or corresponding to the white noise. So, there beta came in the formula, if you I am sure you may remember that. So, which means that we are trying to utilize now the concept of beta to give us some sense about the risk rather than utilize the standard deviation or the standard error or the whole square of the standard error or the variance. So, how would you do that? So, consider that I do not I am not I am just going to the basic idea. Let me use black for the timing ok. So, consider that I I will only consider one of them A, B, C and standard and pose were there. So, consider I have the index uh, Cartesian coordinate being utilized to mark the in index price along with the script price. So, I am marking R M here or let me it is R m sorry small r m and here I am marking small r i. So, corresponding to the return which you have seen, I will basically have different plots points for the so there are 12 points. So, first point, second point, third point, fourth point oh sorry fourth point, fifth point, sixth point. I should they should be equally paced. So, let me mark it one as here also. So, this is 1, this is 2, 
this is 3, they should be equally paced, but somehow space constraint has been a detriment here. So, let me mark it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and this is 12. So, these are the values spread over. So, what I do is that I fit the best fit line considering back the degradation concept, best fit line, best fit line corresponding the fact these errors which are there, which I am drawing by the vertical green, the sum of them need to be minimized, which was the basic idea always fundamental idea of, of regression. And when I fit the best line, so I can utilize the slope of this. So, this value theta, if I find out tan of that, that will me give me the beta values which I want for each and every script. And I can do it for A, B, C the script marked A B C in the last slide, which is the 15th one in this 10th lecture series, which is continuing. Now, consider there are 5 individual scripts, we are taking from the DAX German exchange. So, you are required to find out the respective returns from the time period at 1 1 2020 to 36 2020, that is 1st January 2020 to 30th January 2020. Also find the corresponding DAX returns, calculate the respective values of the betas. Same concept, but the data set is changing. For 5 companies corresponding to DAX as the market index, for that you need to um, uh, in case, okay, now let me expand that discussion. So, in case you want to find out the betas and also corresponding to the idea which we have considered a long time back. So, the discussion now increasing. So, consider these 5 scripts, whatever they are, I will come to that to them uh, that a little bit later. You want to basically formulate a portfolio. So, you can do that. So, if I if I remember, I will draw it separately here. So, this is the y axis, this is the x axis and here I have taken sigma, sigma means sigma hat, even though I am denoting by sigma. And here you have the returns, obviously should be bar, but I am still utilizing the, the values r, r or capital R or small r. And you had the efficient frontier. So, what we are doing here, there are scripts 1 till 5 as mentioned here. So, it is mentions that 5 from taken from the stock from the DAX. Based on that, when I formulate the problem W 1 to W 5, I plot different points. So, that technically should give me the efficient frontier at denoted here. Now, if I consider the risk free interest rate also, which will come here, I am just drawing an orbit point. So, I can find out if you remember the tangent. So, this q point, this I will say as r f, then if I expand the discussion, um, so this yellow line would be the part corresponding to no short selling is there and if I consider short selling further on to q, straight line is going, remember straight line I should draw it. this is going and drawing it in the dotted lines, this straight line would give you the short selling part. And here R f can be found out from the German so called risk free interest rate from T bills. So, just for information the DAX companies are Adidas, Alliance, BSF the big pharmaceutical or chemical company, Bayer. 
Bader Hoff, BMW the in the auto sector, Commerce Bank in the commercial financial sector, Continental, Dilma, Deutsche Bank, the big bank you have, the Deutsche Bors, Deutsche Lufthansa, the Post, Telecom, Eon and so on and so forth. You have also Heidelberg Cement, Henkel, you have Merck, you have SAP, Siemens, Thyssen Group, Volkswagen and Vonovia. Similarly, if you do the studies, I do not, uh, I not have gone through the details. So, you will have DAX as given here for Germany, you will have CAC for France, you will have FTSE for UK, you will have New York Stock Exchange NYSE for USA, you will basically, you can have the the corresponding Nikkei for Japan, Hansen and so on and so forth. Um, and you can the Singapore stock indices, so all these informations which are there, everything can be found out in Wikipedia at least for your information and you can study at least understand them how they function the overall and what are the important scripts there. Now, the next question we have been discussing very simply that how to fit up fit the line find out beta, beta is the best uh, proxy of risk for the stocks in place of sigma and we can do our calculation. So, the next question is how do we estimate the values of the beta, some idea I have given it is very simply. We can use the historical beta values as the estimate of the future beta values. So, obviously, why we are saying that? So, consider again the Cartesian coordinate where I have space here. So, I have different set of points, let me mark the points in, in, in green. So, these are the returns corresponding. So, they are scattered. So, if you see when I fit the best line, it can be not always a straight line fitting base. So, say for example, for the first portion this straight line is there, then for the next portion this is the best fit line or which means you have beta values, different beta values for different time, time frames. So, we can utilize the average or some best estimate for these betas to considering the beta for the whole time frame. So, here the time frame is say for example, first time frame, second time frame, you can find out the average accordingly. So, the equation R i is equal to alpha i into plus beta i into R m plus epsilon. Now, here the error is there is generally not the same with respect to time. In the sense, the values of sigma i, sigma square epsilon i, beta i all change. In case we consider them to be independent with respect to time, then we have some straight line, uh, straight very straight line forward procedure for calculating these values, whatever I was discussing here simply. So, consider it looks like this and why I am bringing this graph, it will be clear to you. So, I have the returns and again whether capital R, small r, it does not matter. I have the returns for the stocks measured and noted down in the y axis, the return for the market noted down in the x axis and I have different points, I have not drawn the points, but this is the best fit line. So, you will have this is alpha i and this is beta i. So, basically tan of this angle. Now, few important formulas, they can be calculated, they can found out in a very good book, Elton and Gruber and all these things. Book. You have beta i. So, beta is basically given by the formula which is basically the ratio of covariance of 
the ith stock with the market divided by the variance of the market. So, sigma i m divided by sigma square m. So, if I expand that in the formula, it basically become this. No, covariance if you remember has similarly as variance as a term by the number of readings. So, if you see the next part which is I am putting a tick mark, the denominator of the numerator and the denominator of the denominator, the part which basically divides when you are trying to find out the variance, covariance values and the variance, they actually cancel out. So, it is not there in the formula. So, the, the numerator is as shown here is basically the covariance. So, I need to find out the expected value. So, basically the formula would be I am just using the random variable x minus mu x into y minus mu y these formulas are being utilized here. So, if x and y are same it becomes the variance and this sigma i when you replace that in the formula this alpha i if you replace in the formula it becomes r i bar i t minus beta i r bar m t and based on that you can find it out. Similarly, if I want to find out the variance, so the variance of that error term it will be depending on time t means the number of readings. So, if this is the case and why I am utilizing this. So, if you remember the actual formula here r i t is equal to time period is there for each time frame. So, you have basically alpha i there is no suffix t it is not changing deterministic value plus beta i r m t the market plus epsilon i. So, I utilize this formula this I use here to find out the error square them up and I find out the the average values so on and so forth to find out the errors. So, you can calculate that. So, here if you see all the values are known to you because if I am utilizing this, utilizing this formula I know r i if you remember the detailed discussion we have of the slides small r calculation. You can find out the averages also done and these returns would basically based on the fact that we are using ln of p 2 by p 1 that is small r and corresponding you can find out the capital R also. Average value I can find out similarly return from the market yes I can find out average value the return on the market yes I can find out I can fit and then basically find out uh, the value beta I already know simple linear regression putting it is. So, I can find out beta based on that. So, these will all be estimated values based on that I can find out alpha i and correspondingly I can find out for these. So, you may also be interested in determining the following coefficients which I have also mentioned. One is basically the value of the relationship which is important this one is important I just highlight it. Now, if you see here the term which is be in between sigma i m divided by sigma i sigma m is basically the numerator is the covariance of the i th script with the market and below you have basically the standard deviation for the index of the standard deviation of the market. So, if you go back to the actual formula covariance, covariance is equal to actually the multiplication of three terms 
correlation coefficient, standard deviation of i, standard deviation m. If you put in this formula, the first part, first part means this one. this part that what we give get is the correlation coefficient of the index in the market and that is being replaced we can prove it based on the formulas that it is equal to beta i into sigma m by sigma i that means rather than correlation coefficient you can represent that with the risk concept as beta and this concept of beta or standard deviation can be used interchangeably depending on what you think is the best way of, of expressing the level of risk. Remember for all the calculations above, I will come to these discussions in more detail. Remember for all the calculation above, we have assumed alpha i sigma square epsilon suffix epsilon beta i are independent of time, which is a very important assumption theoretically they are independent independence is marked here. Having said the values we calculate using the above three equations just done in slide number 21 give us an estimate values estimated values of alpha i sigma square epsilon and beta i and they may be subject to errors obviously if I use the theoretical value practically they would be error. In general this calculation values are not equal to the respective true values so obviously we need to find out the best estimate based on which you can do the calculation. Uh, with this, I will end the, the this tenth lecture and continue the discussion further on about uh, the multi-index model and the averaging techniques accordingly. And as if you remember, as I said, that the plan may be we to cover th four topics, but considering the discussion as going on, we may even though I do mention that being in this, uh, the class that these are the points we will cover that might they may be spillovers in the sense not uh, able to cover that in the same class, but continuing in that in the next class, but definitely we will cover all the concepts in the discussions. Uh, have a nice day and thank you very much.